So everyone, uh, thank you for you know, jumping on the call today. In, in fact, a lot of what Philippe mentioned today actually plays um, well into, into the conversations that, that we're planning to have. One of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation with you all is because here at Microsoft, we you know, hear from a lot of partners and customers you know, some degree of confusion as to whether or not to use one of these methods of creating an online meeting over the other. Should they be using the, going to the Canon, the events API and using the calendar? Should they be using um, the um, cloud communications via Teams? So what I'd like to do today is actually clear up and you know, sp speak to both of these, first of all, to ensure that we have a good understanding of what they're for, how they're used, and also, you know, when to use what, which is the reason why it's termed that way. So, yeah, you know, as part of um, you know the conversation when you're trying to create an online meeting, one of the options is the calendar events API, and what that will give you if you are creating um, you know such an object is to get instant visibility into your Microsoft Outlook calendar. So if this is important to you, where you want to ensure that that online meeting that you're creating is visible inside that person's Outlook calendar, um, you know you know, you, you get that. The ability to update and manage the online meeting experience in Outlook is another one. You'll see me talk about this a little bit later when we talk about the meeting lobby. And attendees may join in person or online or over the internet or via dialing. So there's different modalities of how a person can join um, you know, this meeting. And obviously, if you have rich, you know, the rich client features, if you're inside Microsoft Teams or if it's a Microsoft, Lo uh, Microsoft Outlook, these are areas you know, where you can get you know, the full enrich you know, feature. So if you're looking at this um, in terms of what else can be done, or you, the app developer, are creating this from the API, there's a couple other things that you actually get as well, too. Um, you're able to inspect um, you know, using the allowed online meeting provider property to see what type of meetings that you can create. And um, you are also, let's say that you're, 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 you're targeting um, you know, the, the API endpoint slash events, and you're looking to, you know, to see what's there. If you look at the is online meeting, you can visually inspect that to see if it is an online meeting or not and thereby convert something that was not an online meeting to an online meeting. Um, you basically see that at the bottom right in terms of that screenshot being called out, you know, slash events, um, slash the event ID, and then setting that flag from what was previously false to true, and then also creating an online meeting provider. So, you know, that's one approach there. You know, to go into what Philippe mentioned before, there's a permission model set for this, and you know, this one is pretty simple. It is basically calendar.readwrite for both delegated and application permission. So, um, you know, one set of permissions that's required, and it flows better or not. You're doing direct access, as, uh, as Philippe, you know, you know, termed it, or if you're using delegated, where you require that um, users consent. So, pretty easy, you know, to understand. The another scenario, if you're creating, um, you know, an online meeting is to basically use the online communications API, the cloud communications API. For this one, you know, the, the real demarcation or the questions you're asking is that if you need a richer flexibility, if you need better integration into third party applications, so the key question here, not directly tied to Microsoft Outlook. If you wanted to do this, for instance, if you had, you know, something inside a, you know, a Google account or if it's inside another application like a service now or something else, and you wanted to basically have an online meeting, then, you know, this is something that is given is given and granted to you. So basically, it is completely decoupled from Outlook Calendar. You know, so, so it doesn't does not create one an event for you. Um, it also um, one of the really cool things is that as we are working in a distributed fashion with people all over the country, all over the world, and um, you know people speak different languages other than English. You can actually create as a part of that meeting experience, you know, language based you know information. So it comes up in in the person's native language rather than in English or rather than something else. And um, one of the real cool features that, that I actually do like is the ability to spawn a meeting from a Microsoft chat. Pretty cool. Again, if you're doing this from the context of, you know, looking at the API, there's things to call out. What else do you get for free? Video teleconferencing is, is done inherently through the video teleconference property. This one does require that you have the licenses for it as well. You see being called it out a little bit later on. And um, you're able to really manage attendees at a granular level in terms of, you know, one of the ones being, you know, whether this attendee, you know, can, can bypass the lobby and other, um, you know, security, you know, security enablement that you can do around the user. So really, you know, you can really, you know, target that end user experience for that online meeting. And as I mentioned before, you can associate a meeting with an online chat. The one for here, though, I, you know, to Philippe's point before, I, I heard a ton of stuff he was saying around the application access policy. You can see here that you know for the delegated permission, you need online uh, meetings.readwrite. 
but for the application permission is online meeting dot read write at all with a little asterisk they're saying that you know the administrator would need to basically create an app policy for your app in order to run and run in that modality so if you're using app permission other than delegated permission there's additional steps that are required um you know the docs clearly pointed out and you'll see a link to that reference in in my last screen but here's one example that you know that touch on something that philippe mentioned before so, you know, one of, as I was putting together this um, this deck, and because, as I mentioned before, this is something that, you know, the team here, you know, the, the, the customer partner experiences team that I'm a part of here all the time, these are questions that I get or questions that I would sometimes post back. Um, I think, as Philippe mentioned, you got to interrogate people as asking, why do you need this or why does your app need that? So I typically would ask these questions and I encourage you to ask yourself these questions in order to get the answer. So if one of you on the call here, come back to me later on, I, I will purposefully pull this slide up. But, but you know, quite, quite simply, if um you know if you need to integrate, and I think you, you, some of these are like if I were to quiz you at the end, you've already gotten some of the information before. But if you need to integrate with a calendar item, I think it's pretty clear. Right? We talked about it before. If you need to go into Microsoft Outlook, what API would you be using? So you read all of the stuff and look at the very bottom. You can see clearly see it's the calendar API um, in order to do that because the cloud API is fully decoupled. So pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think there's anything else here that I wanted to touch on. I know you're reading the slide as I'm going. One of the things to call out, though, I did want to create a visual aid for you. The fact that it is um, tied directly to Outlook, this is exactly what that experience would be. So if you're in Outlook or OA and you click on the item, this is what you're going to see coming up. A little bit of a call out here. You see this little thing right here says uh, meeting options. We'll get to that a little bit later on when I when I make that call out. But this is one of the examples where you it, it's not something that's directly tied to the API, but if you wanted to manage the lobby per se, which is what this gives you, it does allow you for, to be able to do that manually. If you were to use the Cloud Communications API, as I mentioned before, you are then you know, looking at a scenario where you are trying to integrate into other third-party experiences. So whether it's a third-party SaaS app, whether it's something inside like a Google, if you're inviting people from the outside and you want to be able to shove it there, then you know if that is the case and you want to ensure the same consistent experience whether or not the person has outlook or not but basically you know throw that um, online meeting to somewhere where they're going to get it then this is the job for you and that's how it would basically manifest itself this one here is an example of the control do you need to revert from an online meeting and basically that so imagine a scenario if you had an online meeting and you wanted to basically go back from an online meeting to a non-online meeting? Could you do that? The answer is notable. Another one is if you need language-based, and I think I touched on this before, do you need to manage language-based information? Then the answer is no if you're using a calendar API, but as I mentioned before, because the cloud communications API is you know, very nuanced, it's very, very granular, you're able to do that, and you manage that experience by actually modifying one of the um, optional HTTP headers, in order to be able to set, you know, it's uh, either EN for English, ES for Espanol, um, FR for French, and so on and so forth. If you are, and this is the other one now a little bit, it's unhidden, but if do you need to join by internet, voice over IP, or by dial-up? That's what the question is being asked right here. And, you know, the answer is yes to both on this one, right? So whether or not you're using the calendar API or the cloud comms uh, communications API, you're able to join, um, you know, by by all these means. You can definitely see the conference ID and phone number on the calendar API. You're actually seeing the toll number and toll free number on the cloud con option as well. Also with the ID that's provided. Do you need to integrate video conferencing audio or video capabilities? This one here, um, the one thing to call out is that it's certainly not supported inside the events API. And you heard me mention before, somewhat in passing, that the, it is available in the cloud comms, but you do need to have you know, a cloud video interrupt license user in order to see that. And basically, you have the ID inside there to basically have that video conference capabilities. The next one is, do you need to create an online meeting that refers to a chat? I think so. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If we're talking chat, we're talking teams, right? Or we're talking, you know, groups. We're definitely not talking calendar and events. So for this one, under the calendar API, it is not supported. However, if you are doing this inside on the cloud comms, as long as you have the chat ID, you can basically create a meeting surrounding the chat. So it has some context in terms of what you're going to be discussing. This one. We're 
do you need to manage a meeting inside the lobby? And that's the reason why I mentioned before that this one's a little bit tricky. It is unsupported in the events API. However, if you were to create an online meeting using the calendar events API, it would have a link inside Microsoft Outlook for meeting options. And if you click on that link for meeting options, you will be able to affect changes there. If you are using the Cloud Comps API, I think I mentioned before also in the larger narrative where I said that you know you have very granular control over the end user experiences. You know, you, you so basically it is a property that you can affect and you can you, you can really be um, really granular and nuanced with that. If you were to click um, the meeting lobby link inside Microsoft Outlook, for instance, this is the visual that you basically would get. You know, um, these are some of the options that are available to you. Okay. So I believe I'm coming up on the last slide right now. This is basically just some resources for you. A lot of what I say right here, to, again, the reason for this is because depending on what you're searching for, especially if you don't know what you're searching for, sometimes it can be difficult to find it. Even sometimes if you know what you're searching for, because you may find it in, in essence, two different locations. If you're trying to create an online meeting, you may find it in Canada, you may find it in events. There's actually a good blog about choosing the API, one which actually took a lot of this content from. Without I form it here in, in, in a more simpler asking a questions format. Some of these guidance is going to be here. And again, you'll get this link in my deck um, afterwards. But as you're doing all of these items as well, one of the things that I hear from our partners and customers also is around, um, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're creating an app to do X, Y, and Z. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to spin up an online meeting. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, thousands, potentially thousands of people in, in attendees or hundreds of people in attendees. And we're doing this and we're having some issues. Understand as well that, you know, the throttling guidance does apply here as well. So be mindful of the terms of use, be mindful of the endpoints and the throttling guidance. And understand that throttling comes in several different flavors as well, too. When you're working with a Microsoft Graph, your first API um, stop is basically the graph, and the graph itself has guidances. It, you know, it has a lot of things for you. It helps you with four, if you're using the SDK for one thing, it helps you with your 429, which is your throttling. So, you know, I encourage you the use of the SDK for that purpose. But if you're rolling it on your own as well and you're hammering the API, you could get some 429s, and you need to handle that by the guidance that are here. However, you know, there is if you do a endpoint and you do a question mark, what if? And behind it, it'll actually show you the backend API that we are also going against as well, too, if you wanted to get a little bit more understanding of that. But I say that to say this, we are also calling the backend services, and the backend services may also have limits as well, too. So I think just as Philippe mentioned before, there is a there's an intersection that could happen around what we have in terms of our throttling guidance, but also the backend services as well as it relates to the Microsoft Graph. Because these have independent limits, I also call it out here. There's the exchange online limits that are here and also the cloud comp limit that are here as well, too. So I think that's all I had for you. Exactly. So open it up for any questions that you may have. Brian, um, I can give you back what, 14 minutes. <laughs> so we got a few minutes at the end for uh, open, open Q&A and then uh, wrap up slides. But yep. Right. But while we're waiting for anyone to put anything into the uh, chat window, or feel free to use the uh, raise hand feature in Teams. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, great content here. We do get a lot of questions on which API should I use, or what are different scenarios. So great to cover this in uh, a more broad detail. Thank you. See some nice claps and cheers and hands in the window. Thank you for sharing those, everyone. Let me pose a question into the to, to the audience. How many people here have created online meetings, and if so? Which API did you target and what considerations were you thinking? I know that's a kind of open ended question, but I like him that way. Allow me to learn from you as well. We have you know, a bunch of people on this call. I'd love to hear your story. Anyone would like to share? Or is this brand spanking new? No one's ever created an online meeting. Okay. Gabrielle is used and faced a couple of problems. Hopefully, Gabrielle, we cleared up some of those problems here today. Lane, you have a question? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking to do a, a an app with resources, exchanges, uh, exchange resources, which would uh, be meeting rooms. How could I do that with Graph? I, I know how to access my own calendar, but does it mean the exchange meeting room has to got a email address to make it work? Maybe. Because yeah, resources do, doesn't seem to be available on, on Graph. Right. I'm not sure if meeting rooms is available. Do you know, Brian? <laughs> yeah, so th there's actually two ways that you can access like meeting rooms on Graph. We have a specific places API. This is meant to treat a 
meeting room or other type of kind of resource as a first class citizen. There's also a way to access it if you have, as you mentioned, like the email address for the meeting room. You can go through the calendars API and be able to go and see things like scheduling or calendar view or similar types of, of things. So uh, some of it will depend on what specifically you're doing. If it's just simply to add the room as an attendee, you know, a, quote, unquote, a resource to a meeting, there are APIs to go and do that so that when you do your send the invite out, basically you create, create the event, you can specify that location as this is what needs to be supplied in there. So do you, do you have any details on what specifically you're trying to do? Oh, I'm trying to do, someone is scheduling a, a meeting and he wants to choose the right available uh, meeting room because there would be a calendar showing up of all the meeting rooms and he can choose for his time. You, you see what I mean? Or? Yeah, I, I think the places API would probably the one to do because then you can query what's available. And then once you get that information back, then you would supply it in your meeting creation in order to book that room along with the meeting under that scenario. Do you need to get a collection of users and meeting rooms to see what, what the schedule would be? Or is it just literally just for the, the meeting room itself? No, it's just available or busy, so they, they can choose the right uh, time. Oops, yeah. looks like uh, Seb beat me to it. <laughs> so that, there is a, <laughs> there's a, actually, do you, want, do you want to share, Seb, since you put it in there? Yeah, so there's a, um, there's an actual API that allows you to get the busy free schedule from a resource, not just from a user, but also from an actual resource that you're going to get from the places mm -hmm. API. So that way you can, you can actually put that logic in, in your app and you're going to be able to, to do that. Okay, I will check all this. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. And then one other thing just to share, the one that Seb mentioned is the free busy um, API. There's also a find meeting times API. And there's a, a slight difference between what gets returned for each one. So one is, you know, give, give me a set of just like available options. The other one is, you know, find the open times and then you can kind of work out which one that you want to schedule for. So and we've actually got a separate document that tells you, well, which should I use when? Because there is kind of that uh, a difference in, what, in what's going to return on that. And an extension to that would be to have a, a virtual agent to do that. You know, you can say, I, I want a meeting at this time and would show you the, the bot would show you the available uh, rooms. You know, maybe I will do that in the future. Yes, yeah, so the bot framework would be very helpful there. Yeah, Teams, yeah, would be great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, great question.